Hi, Jake Smith for the House of Roll here. In this short video, I will show you how to install the rough, flush the valve, and install the cartridge and trim. As I do this, I will highlight some of the great features and benefits of the R23 2 R3 function system. The R23 has one rough that supports two cartridges. One version can be two dedicated functions and is considered high efficiency for water saving states like California. The other cartridge can have shared ports and up to three functions. The rough is the same, and the cartridges for your installation ships with the trim. The valves are solid brass and made in Canada. You may order the valve in half inch NPT, PEX, or expansion PEX connections. You're seeing it in PEX connections here. On all of the valves, the hot inlet is always at the 9 o'clock, and the cold inlet is always at the 3 o'clock. This is the stud bay. This model is wood, but you may see 2x4 metal installations in the field. The first feature I want to talk about is the uh, plaster guard. It's to protect the valve after installation and during the mounting of the solid surface or tile. A plumber will estimate where the finished wall will be, then position the stringer accordingly. The installation depth is a generous 2 inches minimum and 3 and a quarter inches maximum. And if needed, there are 3 quarter inch and 1 and a quarter inch extensions available. The guard clearly has indications that show the minimum and maximum measurements. The R23 has two outlets, one at 12 o'clock for the shower and the bottom outlet for either at the tub or for the hand shower. The service stops are on the hot and the cold inlets and are in the open position on removal from the box. To operate the stops, use a standard slotted screwdriver. The stops are open at 3 and 9 o'clock, and to rotate them into the closed position, put them at 12 and 6. You will also notice that there is a service plug that allows for flushing of the valve prior to installation of the thermostatic pressure balance cartridge. The cartridge will be supplied with the trim. This is a service saving step and prevents the cartridge from being damaged prior to flushing. So what we're going to cover today is how to sweat a connection and what the procedures are as far as removing the parts and pieces that may be damaged by heating the valve. The R23, the R45, and the R51, they all share the same type of stop. This stop is held in with small clips. It's uh, very easy to remove these clips, remove the service plug, and then make your sweat connections. The R23, the R45, and the R51 all share something which is uh, good for the in installer. Uh, there are uh, installation mounts called dog ears that are on the valve uh, placed at 11 o'clock and 5 o'clock respectively. Uh, the valve itself was designed with a flat back so that you could screw this down onto the stringer and then adjust the stringer into the wall for the correct depth. Meant to work in a 2x4 wall, this is a quality valve. So now let's review what we need to do to make a sweat connection. First of all, you have to remove all the bits that may be damaged uh, by the heat. Um, you, as you can see, you have some rubber parts here and then you have the plastic service plug. Uh, they could be distorted or uh, um, damaged uh, so that they wouldn't work properly. So you've seen that I've already removed the hot side stop, removed the spring clip. Next we are going to remove the service plug and then finally we are going to remove the cold side clip. These are spring clips that come off easily with needle nose pliers and then once the clip comes off we remove the entire stop. Now we're ready to make that sweat connection. The valve was designed so that the inlets would accept a half inch copper tube. The installer or plumber would uh, make his uh, sweat connections. Now with the sweat connection made, we've already installed the hot side stop and uh, retaining clip that's here. Next, we put in the service plug and spin on the nut. And then finally, we insert the cold side stop with the slot, slotted screw uh, being at uh, nine and three o'clock respectfully. Final step here is to put in the clip that holds in everything. The clip is easily manipulated with a pair of needle nose pliers.
once everything is back together again, we're ready to install it into the stud bay. First, let's remove the mud guard and pack a rag or material around the valve to prevent water from getting uh, into the wall. Leave room to access the service stops. The reason there is a service plug is to allow the installer to remove the plug and flush the valve, then install the cartridge. The cartridge is designed to last five to seven years with normal use, but will quickly fail uh, if debris is allowed into the cartridge through an unflushed hot or cold inlet. Verify the stops are in the off position. They should be at 12 and 6 o'clock respectively. Then remove the nut using a wrench and using a cloth to avoid being sprayed by any pressure that might be left in a, a line. After the nut is off, remove the plug and discard it. Next we will flush the valve. Plug the area around the valve with a cloth similar material. Leave the stops exposed and the factory suggests flushing the valve for 20 seconds. We will not do that today but we will open and close the valves fully so you can see how that operation is done. Now that we have a fully flushed the rough, we are ready to install the cartridge. The cartridge is color coded. As you can see, the blue side is on the right and the red side is on the left, hot and cold. Inserting the cartridge into the cavity, make sure that it seats into the cavity properly. And then we're ready to install the nut. This is probably the most important part of the whole operation. What we want to avoid doing is over compressing the cartridge as it will lead to a stiff handle and diverting action. So as you see, I put on this, put on the nut hand tight, and now on the directions from the factory, I'm going to draw a line on the nut and on the body itself. Once that line is drawn, I'm going to take a wrench and turn that from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. We can turn it much, much farther, but as I said, we don't want to do that as it will cause over compression of the cartridge itself and it will be difficult to operate the diverter and volume control. The cartridge has been installed. We open up the stops. And make sure water is getting to the cartridge and as you can hear there is some water that are coming through there. So once we know that the cartridge is operational, we are now ready to install the trim. With the backplate installed, then we uh, put on the um, housing uh, that fits over the uh, cavity for the for the cartridge. You'll notice on the on the uh, housing that there is a hole, a weep hole, and we want to place that weep hole at six o'clock. What holds the housing into place is the chromed, uh, what we call a nut. It's not it's, um, technically a nut, but it is the it is the housing nut that is decorative and will hold everything into place. And what we want you to do is put this on, and then you'll see a logo that's on the bottom that will uh, go at, uh, at 6 o'clock. Next, we have the diverter trim piece itself. You'll notice that there is a longer screw that's on the bottom, in this case for a handle, and then a shorter Allen key that's, that's on the top. As you're looking at this, put that Allen key that's on the bottom at 6 o'clock, and then with a 2 millimeter wrench, tighten them. First a little bit on the top, and then a little bit on the bottom. And this might be the, most, the second most critical thing that's in this assembly. These uh, Allen keys hold the diverter handle into place. They must be firm when they're installed. Uh, if this uh, is not firm when it's, it, it, when it's put on, then the, uh, then the whole assembly can slip and instead of having the handle correspond to each one of the uh, functions that's on the plate itself, it could go a little catawampus. So you want to make sure that that is, uh, 
that is a, in, in a nice solid position. Now we're going to put in the uh, diverter handle that goes at 6 o'clock itself. And then we have the uh, screw cover cap that goes on the top. It covers the top Allen key. And then we have the cap. In this case, this cap is a pressure fit. And you'll see that the temperature logo is uh, on there. You want to make sure that temperature logo is uh, readable and, and that the, uh, the arrows that, are on the t that go on the top. This valve has got a one handle to operate the diverter and the volume control, and then it's got an inner handle to operate the actual temperature. So in this case, when we go to the first function, the hand shower goes on. When we go to the second function, the shower head and the hand shower run at one time. And when we go to the third function, it is the shower head by itself. This unit may be operated either clockwise or counterclockwise.